Hi, my name's Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos about using sound in Unreal. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to incorporate sounds into your Blueprint classes. Uh, so the setup I've got here is a third-person template map with the uh, standard starter contents uh, included. And I've got a couple of Blueprints here. I've got a flaming bench, um, and I've got a little pad that you can stand on with a, a collision box to trigger. Uh, if you do so, uh, if you've been following along with my videos, you'll know that these are a couple of my favorite uh, uh, little things to use for assets. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by incorporating some sound into the bench uh, that is on fire. Uh, advisory, please don't sit on this bench, otherwise it might hurt. Um, so... Like other components in a Blueprint class, we can add an audio component. Uh, watch out, though, um, you uh, you want this one, which is, says audio. If you type in sounds, then it brings up media sound. And a media sound component is more complicated. It's much more versatile. It can do all sorts of other things. But that's not what we want, what we want for straightforward sound. So I'm just going to delete that. Yeah, we just want this audio. And we're going to plug in the sound that we want, uh, which is the fire sound, which is part of the um, the part of the standard starter contents. Uh, you'll notice again that um, both the sound wave and the sound cue come up. We've not touched on cues yet, so we're just going to use the sound wave. Um, and we want it to be so that it sounds like it's at a location. Um, and so we want some attenuation settings. I haven't got an attenuation asset that I've made. So if I click on here, there's the choice to make a, a create a new asset up here. So I'm just going to quickly add in my attenuation. Um, if you want more details on attenuation assets, then look at the video that comes before this one in the series. I'm just going to change this to a natural sound and say, and go back into my bench, get my audio component, and it's got my attenuation plugged in there. So I'm just going to compile that and play, and this should give us the same effect as we had in the last video, um, which is where the fire sound seems to be coming from the bench. So there it is. But the, uh, the thing that's now improved from doing that is that if I put another uh, instance of that bench in the world, uh, just to keep going out of the way down here, and uh, I accidentally lifted that up a little bit, so I'm going to drop it down using M and turn it around. It doesn't need to be facing me, it's just more aesthetically pleasing. So both benches are behaving the same sound-wise. Uh, get closer to them, the sound gets louder. Right. So that's um, the very basics of uh, including a sound inside your uh, blueprint. But there is more because once you've got it inside your blueprint as a as a component, you get some more control over it. So we're going to just open up this part here. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, make it so that this also has an audio component. Uh, like the audio, and we're going to make this use the the music, uh, just because that's a nice long-lasting one. Um, starter music. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to use that same attenuation asset in there. Um, but I'm going to scroll down and find auto activation here, so that this music doesn't automatically play. Um, when we start the level, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the uh, the overlap to start and stop stop the sound. Um, so uh, let's drag that out there and use the play sound or play, which is a function of an audio component. Um, um, you can choose where to start in that. Uh, sound wave that you've got, um, but otherwise that just starts it playing. Uh, then we also want uh, events, actor, 
and local line. And we're going to make it stop by and again that's a function that's available there. Uh, so let's go and demonstrate that. Here we go. So that music plays when we stand on the pad and it stops playing when we step off the pad. Uh, actually, it might be more interesting to have it so that uh, when you step on the pad once, it starts the music playing and when you step off the uh, step on the pad the second time, so like a toggle switch, it switches it off. So what we need to uh, know is whether the sound's playing or not to be able to know whether we're going to switch it on or off. Um, and another function out of uh, an audio component is... Um, is playing, uh, which will give us a boolean. Um, uh, yeah, I can say it's a macro, not a function, but it makes very little difference. And we're going to put a branch in there. So let's make sure we get the logic right. So when it is playing, we want to stop. When it isn't playing, we want to play. Let's give that a go. I pressed O as if by magic. Right. Um, so again, uh, because it's part of the blueprint, if we put another one in the world, it will have the same effect. But you might end up with two copies of the sound playing at the same time. Just going to show you one uh, more little setting just because it amuses me um, inside this with the uh, audio is that if I scroll down here, there's um, activation's not what I want, so I'm looking for randomization. There we go. And if we choose the pitch randomization, we can actually get it to change the pitch at which it's playing when it starts playing. Um, and I'm going to uh, use uh, a range between 0 0.8 and 1.2. Um, and you'll notice actually when it plays at a lower pitch, it also plays slower. And that's because it's to make it lower, it's actually literally playing that, that wave file at a slower speed, which makes it uh, bring the pitch down. And similarly, if it plays uh, at a higher pitch, it actually plays it faster. Uh, so let's have a quick listen to that. And with any luck, we'll get it so that um, when we activate both pads, then they're playing at different pitches. So it's easier to tell that there's two of them going on at once. So that... So it's a fairly fun effect. It is not really that useful when you're playing music, but actually that variation, random variation of pitch, is very useful when you're doing things like playing footsteps to make them sound like not all the same. And it's quite a standard uh, little trick to use is to have random variations going on with the pitch and possibly with volume as well. Uh, so that's uh, some of the basics of how to use a, a sound, sorry, an audio component inside your uh, uh, inside your blueprints and that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.